everybody, it's Leroy from Leroy Gaming, and today I'm bringing you my Before You Buy Guide to Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is the next installment in the Borderlands series. It's not a direct sequel to Borderlands 3. It's basically a game that takes time between Borderlands 2 and Borderlands 3. And in this game, you're going to be joining Tiny Tina in her RPG D&D-like game called Bunkers and Badasses in that campaign where you cr create a custom character and play a role while she kind of dungeon masters the whole experience for you. Now, there are going to be extensive features that are quite a bit different in this game versus the previous games, and I'm going to outline them on this video. My goal is to make sure that by the end of the video, you have a pretty good idea on whether this is up your alley and worth your valuable time as well as money. So let's go ahead and start with the differences right from the beginning. So the story-wise, again, is very D&D-like. Uh, if you've played the Bunkers and Badasses DLC from Borderlands 2, you'll get the idea of the kind of the theme and some of the comedy uh, and interactions that you're going to be having with Tiny Tina. But on top of that, there are a ton of gameplay changes that are significant from any other Borderlands game. The first thing of note is the addition of the overworld. So if you can kind of imagine like a Dungeons and Dragons overworlds map, you're going to have a little character representing you that travels across this map. And there's going to be certain hot spots on the map that will include uh, when you kind of go to them. It could be a, a mission. It could be an encounter. And once you hit those hot spots, it's going to load you into a uh, maybe a small map for a small encounter or into a dungeon map and so forth. So instead of all the movement being in a first person traversal like it is in previous games, you're going to have this swap between this over map where you can find treasures, find secret areas, etc. And then you zoom into that first person perspective that you are used to. So that is the first major major change. Now, the next major change is in character creation. So first things first, you can fully customize the look of your character. You can morph the, your face and uh, you, you can contort kind of the look of your character. You can change the voice of your character. You can even adjust the personality of your character. And depending on your kind of chosen personality type, your character will have different one-liners and different interactions with the other characters in the game. So there's a way to kind of really personalize your character. You're gonna also have various kind of outfits uh, as well as your banner can also be customized. You can see this in a pre-order DLC. You get some of these cosmetic changes and you're gonna be able to unlock more of these as you play the game as well. So there's lots of new ways to make your character stand out and look unique. Now, that, all of that so far is cosmetic. So the next thing is to talk about are the character classes. And we are returning to a larger roster, unlike Borderlands 3 that shrunk things down to four base classes. We are now back up to six classes, and a seventh one has been announced for the DLC pack for Season 1 as well. So you're going to start with six classes, and then you're going to have access to seven classes eventually. Now, I also want to point out that with character creation, and this also has to do with leveling, you're going to be lo uh, leveling up certain stats that will be very similar to some of the bonuses that were upgraded in previous games. So now, basically, you're going to be able to increase very Dungeons and Dragons-like stats of strength, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, and attunement. But they're going to relate to other buffs that you've seen before. So, for example, your strength increases your crit hit damage. Your dexterity increases your base crit hit chance. Your intelligence increases your spell cooldown rate, and so forth. So these were kind of buffs that you basically increased in previous games, but there's just new terminology to it, which now brings us to the actual character creation and progression when it comes to choosing classes. As I mentioned, there are six classes to begin with, and each class is going to have an associated passive with it. It's going to have two different abilities or action skills that you're going to get to utilize. And then you have one skill tree. Now, this is different because in Borderlands 3, there were three skill trees per character. And there's a reason they changed this. So, unlike Borderlands 3, you are now going to be able to multi-class, which means you're going to be able to choose a second class sh pretty shortly into the game. And when you pick that second class, you're going to basically get their passive ability. 
you're going to get access to their two new action skills and full access to the skill tree. Now, you're still limited, meaning you can still only use one action skill. So you're going to have one of four action skills to switch out and change uh, relatively easily, uh, depending on what you're going with your build. You are also going to be, have full access to both skill trees, creating these kind of custom setups and customization. So this should bring us an opportunity to make a lot of really fun and exciting builds. And that is much, much different than previous games. Now, also new to Borderlands is the addition of spells. So spells are going to be in addition to your action skills. And so there's going to be a variety of spells that are going to be made by different manufacturers. And they're going to have different abilities. Uh, and they're going to vary just like with your guns in the past. The higher the quality, the more powerful the effects are going to have. They're also going to have different stats that get modified. So you can get some really cool spells, including, I'm assuming, legendary, unique kind of spells at higher levels. And this will let you interweave them into your interaction with your action skills. So when it comes to cooldown kind of abilities, you're now going to have a combination of action skills and spells. So again, even more flexibility to the way that you build your characters. Now, also for the first time ever in a Borderlands game, you're going to have full melee combat. And by that, I mean, in previous Borderlands games, you did have a melee attack. And certain classes would have modifiers that you could choose on your skill trees to kind of buff your melee attacks. But you had whatever melee attack was, you know, pre-built. Maybe it was a punch, maybe you had an axe, maybe it was a dagger or a sword, like Zero had a katana. But in this game, we're going to have drops for melee weapons, just like any of the guns. So there's going to be multiple manufacturers, and each manufacturer is going to have its own kind of theme. And there's going to be different weapon types. So everything from like quick daggers, one-handed weapons, like swords and axes. You're also going to see bigger, slower, two-handed weapons, and so forth. And so they're going to have various customizations, all types of rarities. And for the first time ever, you could build and have a full melee build if you really wanted to. Maybe mix melee with spells. Maybe do a hybrid and go back and forth between melee and guns. Just lots more opportunities and lots more changes, which really fits into that D&D feel of this campaign as well. All right, next let's talk about the six classes you're going to get access to. So we start with the Berserker. And so this is basically a barbarian, has frost magic, does lots of leaping around. One of her action skills is like a whirlwind uh, spin to win attack. So very in your face, very melee focused as a baseline class. Next, we're going to have the Clawbringer. It's kind of like a mix between a paladin and almost like Thor. She gets a dragon as her passive that kind of uh, flies around and attacks. And you have various skills that you can get to modify what the little dragon does for you. Uh, she has a big, big hammer. So her action skills include either throwing the hammer like Thor or slamming the ground and doing kind of AoE fire attacks. She's also big about having uh, AoE buffs so she can buff groups. So in multiplayer and co-op, she can be very helpful to the group. So quite versatile. Uh, character for you. The third character is the Graveborn. And this character is really, really quite cool. It's a kind of summoner class that can summon demons. He has a passive pet that's kind of like a floating skull that will also do various uh, attacks depending on what you're doing uh, with your skills and your skill tree. Also big on sacrificing your life to increase your DPS as a feature. And you'll also gain the ability to summon some other pets as well. So if you want this kind of summoner that sacrifices life for DPS, kind of does blood magic, then the Graveborn may very well be for you. The next character is the Spell Shot. And so this is an interesting uh, hybrid character that has a big thing about interweaving gunplay with spells. So her special ability allows you to basically wield two spells at once. Normally, you could and only wield one spell similar to kind of how grenades, I guess, uh, equipment, you had once a grenade in previous games. So in this game, you can only have two, one spell. She can now have two different spells at any given time and has this awesome interaction that whenever 
you cast spells, it's going to buff your uh, kind of gun damage DPS. And then when you reload guns, it can re, re lower your refresh rate on your spells and so forth. So this really kind of high DPS, potentially glass cannon, but not necessarily this high DPS kind of wizard gunslinger combination. Very, very cool. I think it's going to be very, very popular for multiclassing. Next, you have the Spore Warden, which is a ranger, and he has a mushroom pet, a bikini-toting mushroom pet that you can actually uh, control a little bit more directly based of your uh, skill tree abilities, for example. So this is another kind of pet-centric class that uses the, cla uh, the, the companion to really tank and draw the attention of enemies away from you. Meanwhile, has some really cool abilities where they can shoot multiple arrows or summon tornadoes for increased AoE damage and kind of crowd control. So if you're looking for kind of that ranger of a pet build, this is going to be an interesting class. I could see it comboing really well with other pet classes if you want to kind of have multiple classes. Because unlike previous Borderlands, most of these pets now scale with your damage directly. So in previous Borderlands, for those of you who don't know, you would only scale pet damage with levels and then they would scale to a certain degree when you had actual pet damage modifiers but now yes pets will still scale with pet damage but most of them will also scale directly with your damage so you can kind of get multiple ways to make your pets more viable and then the final class that is announced for the base game is the sabomancer this is kind of your classic rogue his passive is very straightforward, has 30% increased crit chance. So as you can imagine, for any glass cannon builds or just high pure DPS builds that aren't looking for support or having pets especially, you can really just use this as a backup uh, multi-class to just increase your, deep, your crit chance by 30%. Does a lot of sneaking around, can turn invisible, can kind of throw out a dagger that will kind of hover and spin, do a bunch of damage. So very, very high potential dps uh character very much like a rogue i definitely see the stabomancer as being an extremely popular second multi class for multi-class with all of the other classes depending on how you want to build out so uh, i wouldn't be surprised if the stabomancer is either the primary or secondary class for a lot of builds now, Borderlands game wouldn't be without its loot. So this game is going to have a ton of loot and variety. So we already mentioned the melee weapons that are addition. We're going to have tons of different types of guns, six different types of high-powered weaponry when it comes to guns. We're going to have wards, which are the equivalent of shields from previous games. We are also getting the slots of rings and amulets. So those are going to be additional items that will drop that can impact your stats and a variety as well uh, you're going to have the full range of rarities that have come with previous games at their initial core so going from common which is white uncommon green rare blue epic purple and legendary orange and then i wouldn't be surprised if higher rarities get introduced in dlc as they have previously been released with previous games now also a slight adjustment to the game is the alteration in the type of damage types. So you're going to have normal non-elemental attacks, but you're also going to have burn damage when it comes when it related to fire. You're going to have frost damage. You're going to have lightning damage, poison damage, and dark magic. And dark magic is unique because dark magic basically is life leech. So you're going to do damage and heal yourself as well. You're going to see certain classes focus on this. But the various weapons can drop of any of these factors. So this is going to play a big role in your class uh, customization as well. Now what's also great about the game is that the game is going to be more accessible than ever. For those of you that have played this, these games before, they're big on co-op. And so for the first time ever, fr right from the beginning, we're going to have full cross-play. So PC players are going to be able to play with Xbox players and PlayStation players. So both on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, we're talking about Xbox uh, One, Xbox One X. And on PC, it looks like it's going to start with the Epic Store for obvious reasons. And it looks like it will be coming to Steam in the future, 
but unfortunately it is not coming on release so if you want to play it on on pc it looks like you do have to go from the epic game store so it is what it is i wish it was on steam myself but um you know because this is basically made by epic i don't blame them for wanting to start on their store first now the game is also launching with an unprecedented end game built in which is a great change from previous games where you have to really kind of wait for the end game and what they have introduced is something called the chaos chamber chaos chamber if you can kind of think about it it is the very similar to the diablo 3 kind of dungeons so what this is, is you're going to be able to enter these uh, dungeons that will be randomized. You're going to be able to fight different levels of enemies intermixed with mini bosses and a main boss. And it's going to have uh, an endlessly replayable way of getting a variety of high-end loot. It can scale in difficulty. There's different ways to modify these chaos chambers. If you want to see and learn all about them, then make sure to check out the video where I spoke all about the chaos chambers you can find the link to that video below and what's great about this is it's going to interweave with the dlc really naturally so at the beginning right out of the box there's going to be a combination of 60 different or rather there's going to be uh, over 60 different rooms that can be pulled into this combination uh, of runs and then once you get access to new DLC, it's going to add extra content to this, which does bring us to the DLC pack, the season one combination of packs. Now, as mentioned at the beginning of this video, during the season pass, you will get access to a seventh class that has not been officially announced as far as what it is as of yet. But it is also going to give you some interesting cosmetic additions, but the real meat and potatoes of the season pack are going to be four different kind of mini you could call them almost mini campaigns you're going to go through these portals and they're going to be kind of missions that tiny tina sends you on and so you're going to be able to do those missions and their related quests you're going to be able to beat the specific boss and then once you beat that content certain maps from there are going to be pulled into the rotation of your chaos chamber so it's going to Give you more variety on more options and more combinations to the chaos chambers it's also going to increase the type of loot you can get in that end game as well so as more and more dlc gets added that's going to increase that those options as well now what's really cool about these different season uh downloads or dlcs is that once you beat the first boss basically after the first week of the dlc release week two they're going to lock a harder version of that same boss you can beat it again and this is going to be repeated for numerous weeks and if you can defeat the increasingly more difficult challenges, you're going to get increasingly better loot rewards. And this, again, is going to be done four different times. So there's going to be four different kind of sets of different kind of worlds to go into, quests to fulfill, bosses to beat. And it's all going to interweave to the Chaos Chamber. So by the end of the Season 1, you're going to have those seven classes, a vastly increased amount of uh, maps for the randomization and should give this game a really long uh, kind of end life and this is assuming there's not a season two there may very well be a season two that adds maybe an eighth class definitely probably more boss content I, i'm guessing it's going to depend on how well this sells so there you have it everybody everything you need to know about tiny tina's wonderlands i'm super excited i will be streaming this on twitch as soon as this game releases i'm going to be working on various character guides both hardcore and fun as well for different play style so hope you guys look forward to that so definitely if you want to interact with me make sure to head over to my twitch channel at twitch.tv forward slash leroy gaming stream to join me and for more tiny tina's wonderlands content and videos make sure to like subscribe and then always love to hear your comments below with your feedback on how i'm covering this game now in the future thanks for all the support guys and i will see you in the next video